is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is, is that wisdom gives life to them who have it. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And every single week, Mama and I are always delighted to join with you and to gather together with our brethren, all of you here out on the chat. If you're watching us on YouTube, there's a chat over here and you're welcome to join us. Now, don't get too distracted because we got a lot to cover but it is good to say hello and encourage and bless one another. I mean, this is such an important part of our fellowship, the Church of Philadelphia, right? We have to have that brotherly love yes. that brings us together. I mean, and I mean, and it is such an important part of our gathering. So while we do like to come together and get the word, we love to get the, the scripture. We love to get the things he is saying, the now word, right, that he has for the remnant. But we can't forget our love to love our brethren because that is, I mean, in these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I mean, love Yahuwah, your Halloween with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. Right. And love your neighbor as yourself. And this is where we are lacking. And I pray that all of you get a resurgence in your spirit to love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, you know, we need a love your neighbor revival in the earth today amen and amen and so today i want to talk to you about excellence and uh, i know that uh, many of you are seeing the world going in the opposite direction right you're seeing a lot of devolving and you're seeing destruction and you're seeing um civilization sort of unraveling and so you may think wait a second i think we should be talking about that no Understand that, by the way, there's plenty of people talking about the prophecies. Plenty of people now, all of a sudden, they're talking about destruction. They're talking about judgments coming. Oh, well, okay, they got the memo. That's great. I guess we can move on. <laughs> Let that flame. Amen. Because how many know that we need to get ready? It's one thing to know judgments coming. It's another thing to get ready for judgment. Yes. That's, there are two different things. One is awareness. The other is preparation. Yes. And those that are wise get ready. Those that are foolish just see it coming and don't do a thing. All right? And they just stand there thinking that it's going to be great. And then they get swept away. But the wise hide themselves. The wise understand that this judgment that's coming is not a game. Right. Amen. And, and so he is, he, listen, this is the same Elohim that wiped out all mankind and started all over with eight people. Yeah. Same one. When they all got together and thought they could just do whatever they wanted. He confused their languages. Yeah. It's the same Elohim that continues to intervene in earth to make sure we don't go too far that way right well guess what he's about to do it again he's about to intervene again because earth has gone again over and against and and far away from his will but there's a remnant that he's awakening in this hour how many know there's a remnant that he says that he will awaken in the last days he said he will awaken his people he said that he would draw them together and bring them together to their folds where they'll be fruitful and increase he's going to take them away from the scattering shepherds how many know there's a lot of scattering shepherds out there bunch of liars who couldn't find the word of Yahuwah Elohim with both hands and a flashlight and they're trying to lead congregations they need this this is the word for them sit down and shut up and be glad he doesn't destroy you because there have been so many fakes that have gone out there pretending he sent them and he did not. Fire's coming to this nation. And I warned in, 20, in 40 cities, he had me warn the pastors that the congregations would bring retribution for those false doctrines. 
And so there's some congregations coming for some pastors. Um, and you go ahead and keep having your rapture watches and see what happens to you. Uh, he told you to, to, to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and I'll tell you right now, churchianity couldn't recognize the real gospel for the most part. Yeah. Again, both hands and a flashlight. Right. They're preaching something else. Yes, and he told us to preach the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel that's being preached out there doesn't bear a moon cast shadow to the gospel of the kingdom. So there's a whole lot of people getting fake saved. Yeah. Amen. Yes. They're getting fake saved. Yeah. They're not getting really saved because they, they. you can see by the evidence. And by the way, can I just share this freebie for somebody? If you call us up and say you're a member of this house, we're going to check. Yeah. We're going to check. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know what you're thinking if, you, <laughs> if you're not because we're going to call you out on it. Yeah. Amen. And so if you were coming in the door saying, oh, I need to be a part of this, then come properly. Come come humbly. Amen. Don't come saying, the worst thing you can tell us is that you've been watching for four years and then we look back and we don't know where you've been for four years. Nope. You're better off just telling us you just found us. Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're better off just telling us you just found us. Amen. And so I'm just giving that to you for free because we're going to check. We're asking hard questions. Um, we have babies that we're responsible for. We have children we're responsible for. We don't need any half in, half out people. That's right. That's uh, we right. have young ones that we're responsible for. People that are growing up in Torah, growing up in commandments, growing up knowing his word. Amen. And by the way, those that are still confused, anyone who says they love him and keep not his commandments is a liar. Now, maybe yes. everybody else thinks that's no big deal. But when Apostle John told me that, I took yes. it seriously. Amen. So I look at people's lives, and if they're not, if they say they love him but keep not his commandments, I know what pile to put them in. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have to tell them anything. I never have to go say anything. I don't say anything to any of them. I'm just reviewing. Amen. Yeah. And I'm just a teller, saints. We're all, all the servants are just tellers. We just stand here at the, we do not determine whether you're in good standing or not. Yeah. That's not our job. That's his. That's between you and him. Just like the bank teller doesn't determine whether your loan is in good standing. If you come to make your payment for your loan, she doesn't know if you're one month, three months. She's got to look, but she's not in control or he's not in control. They're just the teller. Yep. I mean, that's between you and who, you know, that arrangement is between the two of you, right? right. In the same way, you have to bring your tithes and your offerings to him, not to me. Right. I mean, right. you're bringing them to him. You're honoring him. You're worshiping him. I mean, all we do is observe. Yeah. We're off to the side. We're not even knowing and we're not even involved in what you do or don't give. But we can see if you came or not. We can see that. I mean, just if we just as we could, if the temple were here, we'd be able to see you come and not come, whether you came or not. Right. So those that, that are coming up right now and run up right now, we're going to we welcome you. But don't tell us that you don't, don't give us the I've been a member four years thing, because if as soon as you say that, we're going to go look. We're going to go look. I mean, and so saints, that, and then that becomes a different conversation. So it is much better for you to just repent, humble yourself, and just wherever your fold is, wherever he's called you to be, you go there, repent, and do whatever he tells you to do to be accepted. Because I'm telling you right now, it's going to get brutal. It's going to get brutal. And there's going to be so many people that are going to be like, what? What do you mean? I'd rather tell you now. No, you're not in good standing. Yeah. I'd rather tell you now. No, you need to repent. Why? Because, and if you're not sure, call me up. I'll let you know. And... And, and, and so why? Because then you have time, you have space. You can go, oh my goodness, I didn't realize. Well, I'm going to repent now. And by the way, most people already know. They act like they, they acting like we're not going to check is the problem. I mean, and so just understand that. And this is on earth. What do you think is going to happen when you get in front of angels? This is like a, a, a quiz for the exam. Okay. And I know it's shaking some people because they're going, oh, mama, they're starting to go. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to ask me that. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to check on it. Matthew 25 is pretty clear. Yeah. Upon arrival, he's going to ask what you did with his money. Let me just help you out, exactly. folks. Let me just help you out here because he gave you fake money to play with. Y'all all know it's fake. Everybody be. listening to this broadcast knows. Every, every one of you know that that money is fake. He gave you fake money to practice with before he brings the real thing. Yeah. If you cannot be faithful with that which is another man's, who will give you that which is your own? If you cannot be faithful with the unrighteous mammon, who will give unto you true riches? Yes. Now, did he stutter? No. 
I don't think he stuttered. Danny, you think he stuttered? I didn't think he stuttered. None of my brethren think he stuttered. I mean, so he was very clear. What part of laying not for yourselves treasures here on earth was confusing? Right. That was a command, yeah. not a suggestion, right? Yeah. So once again, any who say who love him and keep not his commandments are liars, yeah. and the truth is not in them. We see right through you. Yes. I mean, so we're going to just call you out. And you may as well hear it now. Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. You may as well hear it now. At least now you got a little time to repent. Now you can go cry. You can weep. Maybe he'll forgive you. But if you walk up to the judgment day with that same attitude, that's what you're going to hear. And I'm telling that to you in love, saints, because I believe there's a lot of arrogance that is masquerading as confidence. And we need to humble ourselves. That's what feast days are about. And by the way, the feasts coming up are all about humility. Let me tell you, yes. who uh, the day of judgment's coming. Yeah. Okay, Feast of Trumpets, yes. Yom Teruah, which is day of judgment. And then we have Sukkot. Uh, we're looking forward to that, but how many know you got to get through these two before you can get to this one? I uh, mean, yeah, you got to get through trumpets, which tells you, you got 10 days, yeah. and then boom, judgment day. You get through that, yeah. then we can talk about Sukkot, yeah. right? And so, saints, understand that we are walking every, it's like musical chairs. How many of you played musical chairs as little kids? You never know which one of these feast days is it. Like, it's live. <laughs> it went from an exercise to live, you know? And we're coming up on a very dangerous fall season. In the natural, you can see it's dangerous. And then you add in the, the timeline that we're in, and it just ramps it up a lot higher. And of course, you look at the things that he is having his servants do in the earth, and I'm not the only one. He's got other, I told you every week I stop what I'm doing, right? I stop what I'm doing to come and chat with you. Ministry goes on behind the scenes. So this is not it. This is just me having Shabbat with you. This isn't ministry. Ministry is going on where you can't see it. Yes. I mean, this is me updating you and getting into the word with you. This is fun. This is delight. This is joy. Yeah. I mean, okay. and then the other six days we're working. Because the king's coming. The king's coming. And that should make you wonder, like, well, well, well wait a minute. What are you guys doing? <laughs> What are you doing for those six days? I only see you on Shabbat. <laughs> We're busy. Because the king is coming, and you should be busy too. And if you're not, if you're about the world's busyness, yeah. right? If you're about Babylon, Babylon's busyness, that babble, 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 Babylon, yeah. right? They just not, they don't know how to shut up. That's all they do is babble, right? You working for them, then that's the works you're going to present. Hmm. If you're working for Babylon, only Babylonian works will you present. Now, if you're working for the kingdom, then kingdom works you present. And what was that gospel again? The gospel of the what? Amen. All right. So today we're going to talk about excellency. Oh, I know this. The, see the standards coming up. And what do you say? He said the enemy comes in like a flood. How many can feel the flood coming? Yeah. How many know that he sends out a flood yeah. to, to, to attack the remnant, right? Yeah. And what does the king, what's the remedy for that? When the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of the living Elohim yes. shall lift up the standard against him. So how about we just bring in some excellence? Come on, somebody. Help me praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about we get to a higher level? How about we fly to a blue sky? Amen. Amen. And see, do it. <laughs> the eagle is the only bird that flies above a storm. And I believe we're called to be like the eagle. We're not supposed to run away from a storm. We're not supposed to be afraid. We're supposed to grab some air and fly to blue sky. Get above the storm. And I believe that's what he's calling us to when he calls us to excellency. And I believe, saints, that that's exactly what he is calling for in this hour. He's not coming for a drab, dirty, in the dirt whore of a wife. He's coming for excellent. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Without what? Spot or wrinkle. Amen. Perfect. Yes. Learned her lessons. Yeah. Waiting for her king. Not somebody he has to clean up upon arrival. Yes. I'm going to say that again because he already did that back there. Now, some, some people think that it doesn't matter. Their conduct doesn't matter. I was just talking to somebody on the phone today, and they walked out of churches going, I don't understand what they're preaching. Yeah. Because as far as they're concerned, what they just heard was the whole New Testament has a big old smiley face on it. It says, it is finished. Have a nice life. In which case, we don't need any of these instructions written in this New Testament. Apparently, we don't have to worry about none of that. All those rebukes to the churches, we don't need to worry about that. Right. 
all those things that John said, Peter said, Paul said, James said. We don't need to worry about that. It is finished. It's all good. Big old smiley face. I may know that that's a lie. I mean, that if you believe, your conduct reflects your believing. I can tell you what you believe based on what you do. So if you let me just watch your life like a fly on the wall, which I do all the time. Okay, I do all the time. That's what we do as overseers. That's what we do. We stand up here and we look down. And we oversee. And what do we see? We see people living out their beliefs. So if they believe that something is acceptable, they go and do it. I mean, if they believe it's not acceptable, they stop themselves. It's amazing. It's all inside. And you can see the difference. You can see the well-parented versus the poorly parented. If you watch, you can see the child stop at the edge and go, oh, my mama told me not to. And then other kids dive right in. You can see what they believe based on the way they act. If a man believes that he can go ahead and sleep with anybody he wants to, right, and his wife's not going to care or his wife's not going to catch him, his belief is going to affect his behavior, isn't it? Amen. If somebody believes that they can walk up to Messiah and all they have to say is, I did many great and mighty works and they forgot his commandments. How many know that he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, you're a thief. Yeah. I caught you stealing. Yeah. When have we robbed thee? When have we robbed thee? Right. Oh, Lord, when did I rob thee? Yeah. In tithes and offerings to your face. Yeah. Was there anything else you had to say? No. Yeah. OK, go stand over there with the hypocrites. Where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you think I'm tough? Wait till my king shows up. Yeah. Amen. And so today we, we have to get this because there's so many people that are running up to the king's coming, the coming of the king with no respect. And I'm here. That's my role is to help you all humble yourselves, get yourselves ready for a wedding. Because he doesn't just ask you to leave when you don't have a garment on. He binds you hand and foot and drags you out. Bind him hand and foot and take him out of the wedding, he says, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, few are chosen. Few took him seriously enough to take his word and make it their life. Most say they believe, but without works, their faith is dead. It's just words. Even the demons give lip service. But when it comes to actions, we see what demons do. The demons believe, but what do they do? Okay, so what you believe has to translate into what you do. That's all we watch. We don't, we don't have to look at what you say. All we have to do is watch what you do. Amen. And so in the process, what are we learning? We're learning what you believe. We're learning what you walk in. And this is why he's calling for an excellency. Oh, hallelujah. He's calling all of us to walk in excellence. I mean, what did they say about Daniel? What was it that was spoken about? Oh, come on, remnant. You need to understand this. This is what was spoken about the chosen, about the elect. In him is an excellent spirit. Amen. Oh, how many know that we need to have an excellence in us that says good enough is not good enough. Yes. Pretty good doesn't cut it. Excellence. We serve the king of excellence. We serve he who came and met every requirement. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And in Exodus chapter 15, uh, I want you to take a quick look there because it's going to bless you as we do. We're going to get into the Torah today and get into the scripture today. I pray that you really get a breakthrough. I pray all of you out here really get a breakthrough today. Let's take a quick look. And it says in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 6, Thy right hand, O Yahuwah. What now? Thy what? Thy right hand. Hmm. Who? Thy right hand. We'll come back to that. O Yahuwah is become glorious in power. What was that now? We'll come back to that. Thy right hand, O Yahuwah, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Wait, what up? What's up with that? Hmm. Dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thy excellency, in the greatness of thine excellency, oh, I like that word, excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together, the floods stood upright as in heap, and the depths were concealed or congealed in the heart of the sea. 
Oh, somebody praise him. Hallelujah. That's who I serve. I serve the maker of the sea. I serve the maker of the mountains. Somebody say amen. amen. And so it's an exciting day because we know the king is coming. But nevertheless, we need to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And how many knows a lot of liars out there that were never sent? And I call them out to their faces and they're running like little scared girls because that's what they are. Because they know they're not anointed. They know they're not called. And they need to sit down really quickly or they will really deeply and eternally regret standing up to speak to his people. Yeah. The judgments that are coming will be brutal. Just understand that. Understand it because he is not playing and he has commanded people. There are people that he has never called to the service of the ministry who are up talking still that he's already told they need to sit down. You're, that hourglass is draining. And that is their lives. Because he's going to pull them right off the planet. And don't think he won't. Because look how many ministers have been gone just this year alone. Yeah. And he's not done. He told me point blank. Many I will slay. Because they will not repent. And teach others their rebellious ways. That's what he said. He didn't sound happy. So I'm just telling you straight what the message is. You can do what you want with it. But if you're in ministry and you're not called, you need to sit down right now. Or he's coming for you. I'm not going to do a thing to you. I'm just letting you know. I'm your brother. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to bless you with the truth. If you're not called, sit down. Amen. Because you're going to get yourself, in, you're going to have to give an accounting for one who is called. And you can't because you're not. You're going to get the stricter judgment that you can't meet. That's a word for somebody. Yeah. Amen. And this is why we do this with fear and trembling. I mean, this is why we do this with fear and trembling, saints. And when he tells us these things, he tells us that with the blast of his nostrils, the waters are gathered together, that the floods stand upright. <laughs> uh, in the greatness of his excellency, he overthrows them that rose against him. This is in his excellency. So now his excellency means in my perfection, in my absoluteness, in my beauty of holiness. I will throw you all down if you try to touch that. That's what he's saying. What happened to Uzzah when he touched the, the Ark of the Covenant? He was just trying to put it back up on the cart. Opened up a breach. He's dead on the ground. Dead on the ground. And he thought I was doing a good thing. Dead on the ground. Why? Because you can't touch it. You can't touch the Ark of the Covenant like that. You touch the Ark of the Covenant, you die. And see, this is the severity of our Elohim. And I, and I tell you something. One of the things he told me is that he's going to restore treasure to the earth or treasure on the land that he gave us. Uh, and, uh, and then he gave me Isaiah 33, and it says the treasure of the fear of Yahuwah. And I knew what the treasure is. See, he's going to bring back the fear of him. Because when you have the fear of him, there's a lot of things you'll avoid. Now, I quoted Ecclesiastes when we started. Go ahead and turn there to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we're going to start in verse 11. Uh, because I believe this is very pertinent uh, to this time period. And in fact, this verse is the 666th verse. So pay attention. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. And by it, there is profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense. And money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Amen and amen. amen. And so wisdom giveth life to them that have it. So money can be a defense. It'll help protect you. And wisdom can defend you and help protect you, but it can't give you life. Um, wisdom is the only thing that gives you life. So money cannot give you both. Wisdom gives you both. <laughs> so if you have wisdom, you will have blessing and you will have life. Whereas money only gives you just a little bit of a defense. And people have opted for the latter. They opted for the, the temporal and gave up the eternal. And so this is one of the problems that you're seeing right now. And as I've told you all, you've come to a fork in the road. You didn't know you were coming to a fork in the road. I understand that. But at a fork you are nevertheless. Yeah. And now you have to pray and say left or right. Because he's made it clear. He said you cannot serve him in mammon. And if you haven't noticed already, their systems are collapsing because they were all fake. They were born and made to collapse. It was intentional. They're unrighteous mammon. 
So of course they're going to collapse. Of course there's going to be problems. And of course it's going to be unjust. Of course it's unfair. It's unrighteous mammon. It was just for practice. It was just for something for us to learn how to be faithful with something like Monopoly money. Until yeah. he gives us the real thing. He wants to put in your hands the real thing. He uses this to train you. Now, if you can't be faithful with that, there's nothing further from, there's nothing else to do. He certainly can't give you um, the, the excellence of his true riches, which will give you amazing power when you can't even be trusted with Babylonian stuff. It's just that simple, saints. It's really that clear and simple when we say it. Somebody just has to say it out loud. There has to be a grown up in the room and says, sorry, that's not going to fly. And then all these fantasy ideas of it doesn't matter go out the window. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, boo-boo. That's why he says to some people, depart from me, your work of iniquity. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I don't have any friends that are thieves. I don't have any friends. I, let me just help you out. Messiah doesn't have a single friend that doesn't honor Father. None. None. Not a single thief in the whole bunch. He's pretty clear in the book of Revelation where thieves go. Along with the liars. Amen. And so this wasn't a joke. Never was a joke. Now we're coming in for a landing and everybody's trying to run to quickly change their papers. They want to quickly change their answers on their paper. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. It's called repentance. It's called bring forth fruit meat for repentance. It's called run to him. Amen. And oh my goodness. It's amazing how few actually hear his voice, saints. Yeah. How few actually hear his voice. And so, and, and I'm telling you right now, these ministers are buying their sermons. All right. They're buying their word. They're buying things from each other. They're re-preaching other people's old stuff. You can't trust them. That can't be trusted. They have to have now a word. And I'm telling you right now, he's going to bring all the remnant together so he can instruct us all. So he can clean up all these messes that we done made with our arguments and debates. Come on, saints. Yeah. When we got away from simple things that are right there in our face. What part of the last trump did we not get? See, things like that just I don't I don't I don't understand why there's even a discussion. Amen. And see, saints, this is where we the remnant, we need to not be involved in all that. We need to be like Messiah, walking by all those arguments, right? So the other denominations want to stand around and argue. We're the denomination that keeps walking. Amen. That goes and does his will. That goes and prays for the sick, casts out the devils. Leave them arguing. Leave them over here debating. When he comes, he'll deal with them. You get to work. You go bless the poor. You go heal the hurting. You go minister to the bruised, right? Because what did he say would be the seven judgments that he would bring upon arrival? Upon arrival, they're right there in Matthew 25. So today on Shabbat, you might want to review those, amen? And so he's telling you that wisdom is a defense. You need wisdom in this hour. And he's catching people left and right in their own craftiness. They thought they could wrangle his word. They thought they could use a scripture to cover their sin up instead of repent for it. How many know that you don't cover sin with, with uh, pages of paper or, or arguments? When you have sinned, you need blood. Amen. A propitiation must occur. And he says in 1 John that you have to confess. That's not an arguing or debate. He didn't say you would argue or excuse. He said confess. And stop ruining a good apology with an excuse, please. Yeah. Amen. Give the repentance first. If he asks you for a reason, then give it to him. Otherwise, just repent. How many of those are the best apologies? Somebody just says, I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I don't know what I was thinking. It's easy to forgive that person. But how about the person that says, well, let me explain what happened first. What they're trying to do is they're trying to say, I didn't really do nothing wrong. I'm not really sorry. That apology is going to fall flat. Just a freebie. Amen. So if you're going to repent, repent. Don't repent. See, what, well, well, Father, you don't understand. See, I was, I was a little tight and I was struggling and I was this and I was that. You're not trying to hear any of that. He is not trying to hear any of it any more than a wife would be trying to hear from a husband why he's still flirting with his ex. Oh, come on now. She would just not be trying to hear it. That's right. Not trying to hear that. Not okay? Trying to hear it. And especially if you took the paycheck over there. Mm -hmm. And you okay. took care of their groceries before you came here. Woo! You don't even know how mad. Woo! Please. I'm sure that gets every woman wild, though. <laughs> 
And now we're talking about the Most High Elohim who sent His only begotten Son. That's right. That's right. He gave you His only. He gave you His only. Yeah. Come on, now preach that. Mm. He can have it all, saints. That's right. Amen. That's the way it's supposed to be. Amen. We're supposed to be like, I'm giving it all to you. And he said, oh, no, I only want this portion. You sure? Because you can have all of it. No, no, no. I, you can, I just want this. To, you sure? Because I'll give you all of it. That's the way our heart should be because we should be so grateful for our salvation. Come on, somebody out and preach yes. this thing out here. We should be so grateful for our salvation. He could ask us for anything, anything at all. Doesn't matter what you tell me to do. I'll give you anything. And see how different the remnant are from everybody else? That's why some people can't hang out with us. Yeah. They can't because we're too intense. We love him too much. Our love is real. So he doesn't have to stutter to us. He doesn't have to tell us five times. He tells us once. That's it. We're going. Yeah. Why? Because I love my father. I love my father with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I love my brethren as I love myself. That is real. And if it's real, it should show in your actions. Somebody say amen. amen. In Isaiah chapter 4, he tells us something about the day that we're walking in. And I'm going to warn you right now, and I didn't even know this was going to be included. I had mentioned this passage to Mama earlier today, and then he, and as it turns out, it ends up in uh, in this discussion. So <laughs> Holy Ghost is, and I mean, I didn't even know it was there, but here it is. Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 1. Chapter 4 and verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread. And wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of Yahuwah be beautiful, the Netzarim, beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and the comely for, the, for them that are escaped of Israel. So escaped those that got out and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy even every one that is written among them among the living in Jerusalem oh hallelujah and so he's going to remove the wicked and leave the holy <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's exciting news, but it's not great news for those that think that the wicked are going to get a pass. They're not. The first thing Enoch said when he wrote to us a long time ago, wrote us a letter, the remnant. He wrote the remnant a letter. And he said, those who are going to be living in the day when the wicked are removed. That's what he said. The wicked are removed. Amen. And so Yahuwah Elohim is right now prepping his people, the ones that hear his voice, and do what he says. Not just hear him and then ignore him. Those people are going to get destroyed. He's talking to the people that hear him and do. Yeah. See how that easily separates everybody? Isn't that nice and easy? He just speaks, and he just waits to see who listens. And the ones that listen, he saves them. Last time, one time he did this, it was only eight that got saved. Another time he did it, only three got saved. Sometimes they don't hear so good. I mean, don't let that fate be yours. In Psalm 47, one of the things about the tabernacle, the tabernacle of David is different than the tabernacle of Moses. So at the tabernacle of Moses, you didn't have some of the things we're going to have at the tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of Moses was about animal sacrifices. The tabernacle of David is about praise. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> In Psalm 47 and verse 1, oh, clap your hands, all oh, ye people, shout unto Elohim with a voice of triumph. Oh, glory, hallelujah, for Yahuwah most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He ain't running for king. He is king. Amen. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Yaakov, whom he loved, Selah. Elohim has gone up with a shout, Yahuwah, with the sound of a trumpet. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, come on. Come on. Help me praise him in this place. Because you know we're fitting to blow some trumpets in the in a mountain. Oh, real soon here. A feast of trumpets is coming faster than you know. And we'll be blowing trumpets in the mountain. And I want to tell you, saints, I can hardly wait to see just what he's doing. And every day goes by. We look at the news. We're like... Whoa, <laughs> this is getting intense, right? 
Why? Because it's going to keep heating up. Remember, saints, this is a battle for authority for the next thousand years. He comes to rule with a rod of iron. Amen and amen. In Psalm 148, a whole lot of Psalms later, look at this now. Psalm 148, verse 10, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth. Oh, he's calling everybody. Look at this. He's calling the animals, beasts, and all cattle, creeping things, and flying fowl, kings of the earth, all people, princes, and all judges of the earth, both young men, maidens, old men, and children. Let them praise the name of Yahuwah, for his name alone is excellent. Woo! I'll say it again. His name hey! alone is excellent, hey! and his glory, oh, hallelujah, Woo! his glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye, Yahuwah. Somebody say amen. amen. So this is what he's calling for. He's saying, I want my people who are called by my name, right? He's calling them out. And he's saying, come on over and praise and worship amen. and gather amen. together. And this watch as I deal with the nations like a great king. Oh, hallelujah, who's brought his tabernacle of battle. Oh, glory. Yes. Going to war with evil. Going to war with these evil, sadistic, wicked spirits who have been inspiring men for thousands of years to do abject evil underground, behind closed doors, in basements, uh, things you don't even want to know about, right. right? That we don't want to even talk about. They're unlawful to even be uttered, but they're happening. And Yahuwah has had enough of it. Se acabó. Fire now comes. Fire. Utter burning with fire now comes. For the children of disobedience. For those who thought it was a joke. And I want to tell you. When he talks about excellency. When he talks about excellency. That is the word in Hebrew. Yitron. Yitron. And it means. Uh, it means preeminence. It means gain or to do better. It is akin to prosperity, only it is the finish of it. It is to arrive. Excellency is you have arrived. Somebody say amen. amen. And so when he calls you to excellency, he's calling you to your finish. Mm -hmm. He's calling you to that place of without spot or wrinkle. That they can lay no charge at your feet. They can't find a flaw in your doctrine. They can't find a flaw in the things that you're doing because you're sticking close to his word. You're following right behind Messiah who, who keeps all the commandments. So if you're following Messiah, keeping the commandments will just be automatic for you because that's all he does. Yeah. I mean, so that'll be really easy. Yeah. That's how I know who's following him. I mean, it's really not that complicated. You're following the law giver. You're following the one who, he is literally the word made flesh. You follow him, you're going to obey the word. The Holy Ghost is going to confirm the word with signs and wonders following. The only people that are going to argue with the word, the people not following the word. Somebody stay with me, amen. amen. And in Hebrews chapter 1, he tells us the answer about the right hand. See, that was just in the Old Testament, so we didn't know what that really meant until the clarity came, until Mashiach comes Look at this Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 1 and verse 1. Elohim, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of, the, of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath uh, by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Mm. Amen and amen. amen. And so his name is excellent. His name is not pretty good. His name is excellent, which is why when they were about to start cranking the Bible printing press, let's crank some Bibles out. <laughs> Oops, we might want to cover up his name 6,000 times. We might want to change and add a letter that didn't even exist. Yeah. 
So everybody will get confused. Why? Because we can see what's coming. He's going to fulfill his promise, which was that his name would be broadcast throughout all the earth. So the devil and all of his minions decided they would cover it up, thinking they could stop the prophecy from coming to pass. But lo and behold, it didn't work. You still have learned his name, Yahuwah Elohim. Amen. Somebody say amen. So their effort failed. And they knew those Bibles were going to get printed and put on everybody's coffee table. And so it was, a, it was an attempt to make a slight adjustment. And how many know that when we start digging, we find out, oh, you sly devils. I mean, we start finding out that they're slick and they're clever and they're deceivers, but not to the children, only to the lighthearted. The people that don't bother to look will not find it. But the ones that love them, people that, that you can't fool them. I mean, that's real love. Real love digs through that surface stuff. Real love's not easily fooled. Real love keeps pursuing. Real love loses all sense of time and space when he's pursuing. I mean, so if you're really in love with him, you wouldn't have got fooled by any of that. You would have gone right past the wait a second and kept looking and kept digging. Amen. And that's why you, the remnant, you who love him, you live a different world. You, you're in a different anointing. You're in a different place than those that are still paying lip service to the world and, or sorry, paying lip service to the kingdom while they're still living in the world. Right. So they pay lip service. They're pretending to be with him because they don't want to lose their salvation. Right. They, they don't want to lose eternity. But, you know, they're doing the Babylon, mm -hmm. doing the Babylon. Mm, doing the Babylon. Mm, 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 doing the Babylon. Oh, Babel, 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 Babylon. Right? And so they're not worshiping him. They're worshiping over here. Yeah. And I can tell you. I can show you what clubs you went to. I can show you what movie theaters you went to. These are all temples. These are all things that are other places for you to give your time, veneration, attention, understanding, knowledge, everything. And you say, wait a second, brother, but I live here. Yeah, you live here, but you weren't supposed to uh, assimilate into Babylon. You're supposed to stay separate in the world, but not of it. That's what excellence does. What is it that makes something excellence? Excellent. It retains its excellence despite it being surrounded by common. Yeah. What makes something excellent? When you see a beautiful car, an excellent car in the parking lot, it is in comparison to all the other cars stands out. It doesn't dumb down and become one of the common cars. I mean, it stays excellent or set apart as being extraordinarily well done. How many know that you need to be extraordinary in this hour? Not just an ordinary, but an extraordinary person who goes and does the extra things. The things other people aren't even thinking about. That's what makes you the remnant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's so exciting to me because I know that as I'm sifting through all the life, <laughs> I'm sorting through, I'm like, feel like I'm sorting through dirt and I'm like sorting through all, oh, you're not a real believer. Right? You're a fake. You're, you're a liar. <laughs> you don't even love him. You couldn't find him with both hands in a flashlight. Hey, you, you love him, don't you? Come on over here. Hey, I see you. Look at that humble heart. Come on. Come on. You we have a house for. <laughs> you we have a place for. You, sweetheart, come on. Come on. Yeah, that little humble one in the back. Not the ones loud in the, in the front. There's a lot of them that want you to look at me, look at me. And then when you look, you don't like what you see. You kind of wonder why some people draw attention to themselves. You really do. And so saints, understand that when he calls us to excellence, he intends to look. I know that's deep for some folks, but he intends to review so you should at least be striving for it. Amen and amen. And look what he says about Mashiach. He says he's seated at the right hand. So back here in Exodus, we heard some praise going on, didn't we? We heard him praising and worshiping and saying the greatness of thy excellency, thou has overthrown them, right? And <laughs> that right hand in Exodus 15, thy right hand, O Yahuwah, hath become glorious. Yes, it has. <laughs> Amen. Yes, it has. Amen. The right hand of Yahuwah, who's seated at the right hand of power, Yahusha HaMashiach. He alone is king of kings. Woo! Glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And so, saints, understand that he is bringing his word to you in this hour about the right hand because that's where power is. Now, that's what he brings in this hour. He brings the rod of iron from the right hand. 
the rod of iron. And saints, I know that a lot of people think that that still means some things are up for debate. The rod of iron is a, is a way of saying absolute rule. It means there is no debate. What he says goes. As I've been saying for decades, he's not running for king, he is king. When he says so, it is done. And any who argue will perish. Bring those who would not that I would reign over them and slay them before me is what he said. Now, do you really think we want to go through this Lucifer thing again? No. So he's going to cut no one quarter who wants to argue, debate, or complain. Amen. Last time they did that, they died in the wilderness. And so, saints, this is why it's important that we get this message now, that you get this rebuke now, correction now, right? It's a good Shabbat for that. And then just say, okay, yep, he's right. You know, Peter's right. The king is coming, and uh, I, I need to get my own life. Boy, I got to stop playing it. Oh, man, you know. And maybe you don't go do something you were thinking about going to do. Maybe because you hear this broadcast, you go, oh, that's not very excellent. What I was going to try to put together for a business plan wasn't excellence. What I was trying to put together for a relationship was far from excellence. What I was trying to put together for, for, for this or that is not excellence. And he's saying, where's my excellence? Come on, saints. Where's my excellence? Yeah. You're going to build a tabernacle. One of the things I asked Dr. Harmon, I said, is anybody else out there got this tabernacle built anywhere in North America? And he says, there's no place. Nowhere. I said, is there a holy precinct anywhere? Nowhere. Is there a consecrated land anywhere? Nowhere. Why do you think he stopped to look at what we were doing? It so moved him because only a son would do that. Yeah. Only a son would consecrate that much land and say, this is only for this purpose. Yes. No, I don't want a church building. No, I don't want some grand cathedral. Right. No, I don't want uh, uh, some, some coliseum. Right. I want a place where my brothers and my sisters can come together, can put the world away, can unite and worship him. Amen. To come together into their 12 tribes, finding their fold, finding their place, getting before him as prophesied. Mm. This is my cry. This is what I labor for, if you will, to see the king's will done in the earth. To see the king's will done in the earth. Nothing else matters. And certainly not Babylonian money. Somebody say amen. amen. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. So you see why I continue to remind you? Because I've commanded to. To put you in remembrance of these things. Though you know them. I know you know these things already, but I'm reminding you anyway. And be established in the present truth. How many know that we need to stay in the present truth? You can start drifting off 2,000 years ago. You can start drifting off into the past. You can start fantasizing about a future. And any one of those, either one of those can get you in trouble because you're not present in your present. How many know that he's a present help in time of need? And so we need that. And yeah, I think it me, as long as I am in this tabernacle, notice that, that the tabernacle that we're in is a body, right? So this body is a tabernacle, right? And so to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as the Lord Yahushua HaMashiach hath showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Yahushua HaMashiach, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from Elohim the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. What, what mount? The holy mount. Which mount? The holy mount. Mom and I have been there. It's called Mount Tabor, Mount of Transfiguration. And we went there, eight of us went there, to pray for the United States of America. It was a long, that was a long way up. I'll tell you what, whoo, you grew some respect for Peter, James, yeah. and John. Oh my goodness. Because that, the, we drove up this hill and we were exhausted. Yep. <laughs> we were exhausted yes. driving up this hill. Yes. We couldn't imagine walking up. No. Just, I cannot imagine 
how much time that took. And then when they get up there, they have an encounter with Moses and Elijah. Yeah. Wow. As Mashiach is transfigured before them. And so this is what Peter is talking about when it says the voice came from heaven and we heard. And see, this is the excellency. This is what we have to remember. In fact, in, in the old days, uh, when they were talking to a monarch, you would call him your excellency. Right. In fact, they still do uh, still use that term, uh, your excellency. Why? Because it was meant on the minds of royalty to do things with excellence. Well, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So how should we do everything with excellence? Amen. With excellence, with no compromise at all. If it says copper, it has to be copper. Amen. It's not complicated. And why? Because it honors him. It's a demonstration of honor. It is a demonstration of love. It is saying, you told us, we did it. Here it is. You did, we did it exactly the way you said to do it. Amen. Why is that important? Because there aren't that many doing that. There are few that are willing to do what he says. Oh, they'll hear him. They'll listen to a safe series. Don't listen and say, oh, that was good. Oh, that was good. Oh, they'll give it a thumbs up. Like. They'll like it. I like it. But they won't do it. I mean, no, liking a video and not doing it just says, I saw it and I refused. I mean, I saw it and I refused. And so, saints, this is why it's so important in this hour that we strive toward excellence. That right now you make a commitment for excellence. And I know many of you, as I've been speaking, are going, wow, Peter, you're right. The Holy Ghost is convicting me right now. I have not been operating with excellence. I do not operate with excellence in my work. I don't operate with excellence in my marriage. I don't operate with excellence in my ministry. I don't operate with excellence in anything I'm doing. Actually, I'm looking around and I'm kind of not feeling too proud of some of this stuff. This is a good time to repent. This is a good moment for him to bring in his excellency. Let's just pray that by his spirit, he will bring in that excellence you need right now. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for every one of my brothers and sisters that are listening to this broadcast that are out here with us, standing in faith, believing in your word. And I just pray right now that you would remove every form of compromise from them, that they would no longer accept or consider acceptable uh, minor grades and lower grades of performance and behavior, but instead would strive to excellence in everything that we do. And Father, I just praise you and thank you that you rebuke the devil right now. Shut that devil up in the name of Yahusha. I thank you for it and cause him to be gone in Mashiach's name that we would not hear these compromising words again. But instead, let your angels, I say again, let your angels minister excellence to your people. Let your angels, Father, I pray, minister excellence to your people right now. Let them feel and know the presence of your angelic host to minister for the heirs of salvation that they would finish with excellence. And I thank you for it, Father. For apart from you, we can do nothing. And I thank you that you send ministering spirits to minister for the heirs of salvation right now. That they could eliminate anything that is not excellent. That they would bring only that which is pure, lovely, and of good report before you. In Mashiach's holy name I pray. And the people said, Amen and Amen. Go ahead and give him a shout. Amen. Hallelujah! <laughs> Some of you going, oh, I had to rebuke myself out there. Rebuke I had to rebuke myself. Myself. That's okay. You know, that's what we do these for. Because sometimes we need to check and we're going. And when I get a note from somebody that says, Peter, I needed that. I, I really did. I needed that. Then that's what it was for. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe you're one of those people like, I'm already operating in an optimum. I'm doing as excellent as I can. I can't get any more excellent. Okay, okay, calm down. I wasn't talking to you then. <laughs> I mean, but the rest of who are throwing in that mediocre. Giving him that half in and half out. What does he say he's going to do with that half in and half out? That lukewarm. He's going to spit it out of his mouth. He's king. Bring him the best. He's king. Amen? And so don't present to him some half effort. Don't present to him your, your, in a lackadaisical way. Instead, go before him and make your pledges and then keep them. Because, you know, that's another thing, by the way, just a word for some people out there that are making vows before him and then not following through. Um, you, that judgment is harsh. That judgment is brutal. 
um, it's akin to taking his name in vain. So saints, if you made a vow and you didn't follow through, now's a good time to repent. Now's a good time to say, I'm really sorry for that. I shouldn't have done that. Get before him and anybody that you did that with and get repented and, and at least, you know, address it because it, pretending it didn't exist, pretending he doesn't ask for and demand our excellence is foolhardy. It's foolhardy. He asks us to be, he says, be holy even as I am holy. He's telling you to be perfect. That's his expectation. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. As he's expecting that. And by the way, healing is not a suggestion. It's a command. We are commanded to heal the sick. Yes. So get to that. Heal others. Stop being so concerned about yourselves. Anybody seeking to save his own life is going to lose it. So if you're losing your life, see if you're being self-centered. See if you're looking at your own self first. Seeing if you're paying only attention to yourself. If that's the case... If you can't constantly turn conversations back to yourself, if you know everything's about you, right, and not about everyone else, that may be the issue. And so, saints, be aware of that because that disease is in the water. Um, narcissism and arrogance and self-admiration. Um, wow, it's in the water. They put that in a they put that in a Kool Aid or something because I cannot believe how many people are in love with themselves out there. And won't even look at the scripture just presuming that they're just great because a pastor some pastor out there who's probably one of the 400 scatterers told them a word mm -hmm. amen and so understand that saints this is where we are this is the hour we're in but i know that you are the remnant and your heart is for excellence your heart is to do things right to do it right because it's right and I know that. I love you for it. I am so grateful for all of you who are so stout-hearted, who absolutely refuse to back up. And this is what makes this house so amazing. I, I was just talking to Pastor Lucas earlier, and I was talking about just the courage in the house and how important it is for us to be courageous, uh, to speak the truth in love. Amen. And there's so many cowards out there that are afraid to tell the people the truth because of the impact or the repercussions. Maybe they're going to lose support. Maybe people are going to beat feet and head for the door, right? You shouldn't care. They were never your source, Pastor. That's right. You shouldn't care where they go. You shouldn't care if they're going to. You should just preach the truth regardless of whether they stay or not. I mean, when you do things for money, now you work for money. You don't work for him. There's a whole lot of them that, that cut that corner and compromised, and now they're sorry. And rather than bring themselves to just repent, just come to the feast. Come repent. We'll pray for you. Pour oil on your head. We'll put some Shemen Raphael on you. You'll get better. Where did we do with it? What did I do with the bottle? It's around here somewhere. We'll pour oil on your head. You'll be okay. Don't go blow your brains out. All right? When you get rebuked to sit down, it doesn't mean go sit down and shoot yourself in the head. He means sit down, stop preaching, go talk to some anointed vessels, and get some things fixed. That's what the feasts do, by the way. We get together in the feast days, and we gather together. Oh, there it is. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. We need some recover. See, we'll pour this on your head, and you'll recover. Amen. <laughs> you will. You'll recover. You'll be okay. Thank you, honey. And so don't despair. Just because you got rebuked doesn't mean you get to despair. Just come and get healed. Amen. Come and get healed, and then do it right. Come get instruction, and run correctly. Amen just like you would have done in the first century. And so saints, this is why we need to get together. This is why he's gonna settle debates. I can't yes. wait. I, I hope everybody comes with a bunch of questions yes. so he can just answer them yeah. and we can be done. Yes. We can leave there united going, man, that was awesome. Exactly. Star Spangled Awesome. Star Spangled Awesome. <laughs> oh man, Star Spangled Awesome. Well, I suppose I've taken up enough of their time today. They want to run off. They want to go do things. They busy. I suppose. <laughs> we love you all so much. If we could, we would just come to your houses and kiss you all. But we can't, so we just kiss you anyway. We love you all. We bless you all. We are so grateful for every one of you that are being found faithful. Amen. In this house, your testimony is amazing. I, I, we rebuke the people that are unfaithful a lot, but I really need to spend a lot more time on the people that are, because you guys are amazing. Yeah. 
Okay, I mean, wow. I am so grateful for the people that don't even need me to say anything, who are just being moved of the Spirit. Some of you are calling up saying, he told me last night to go do this and this, and you're just calling to let us know. Like, we don't even need to tell us, but you're telling us anyway just because you want us to know about it. <laughs> and he's just telling you what to do. I think that's exciting. I mean, it's exciting because you're finally moving. You're not just waiting around for something to happen, right? You're moving. He's giving you things to do. It's real. It's personal. He's telling you, sell that. Get rid of that. Give that away, okay? Send that to Peter. Um, call up Pastor Lucas and tell him this. Um, give this over here. Do this over here. Why is he doing this? Saints, if you can't feel it, the king is coming. Amen. He is, his presence continues to cause repercussions in the earth. It's shaking. It's shaking. I'm so excited because this is my only prayer request. My only one is to send me my king. That's why I'm doing everything I've done. Everything you've seen me do over 25 years, all for one prayer request. Send me my king. Yes. Amen and amen. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all of you out yes. here Thank who you. made time for us today. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, he alone is king of kings.
Ah. Uh-huh.